Hey y'all, and welcome to Skyrim Scripting. On this series of episodes, I'm going to show you how you can create your very own Skyrim custom console command. You know, when you hit the tilde key and it goes whoop, and it opens up a console and you can type some commands and then it goes whoop. I'm going to show you how you can add your own commands. We're going to look at how we do it, uh, consider a couple different approaches, and by the end of this series, we should have released a mod on Nexus that makes it easier for other mod authors to also create their own custom commands. And if we have time, we'll see. I love to make a mod that also focuses on the end users, the gamers, and maybe lets gamers uh, create some uh, custom commands that will, I don't know, be like macros and will run some other custom commands. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go along. So let's hop into the first episode. Um, so here, here we are with some Papyrus code and here's some C++ code. Um, we're going to be uploading everything that we do to a GitHub repository. Uh, we'll do that throughout the series. And uh, when we're ready for release, I will mark it public or I will do it um, as soon as I upload the first episode to YouTube so that it's available. So when I searched for how to create a custom console command, because duh, of course I wanted to make one, I found two solutions. Uh, one using SKSE via Papyrus, and the other using SKSE via C++ directly. Um, both have pros and cons, we'll look at them. In this series, uh, we're very likely to only focus on implementing the Papyrus only because I am not yet up to speed on uh, feeling comfortable making C++ SKSE plugins. I really want to get there. I've been coding for a long time, but C++ isn't my forte, so I'll work on that soon. So we're going to focus on Papyrus, and interestingly, these two approaches currently use the same API anyway. So I want to hop in game, because I want to show you what um, this Papyrus base approach does. Um, now this is credit to this user. I don't know how to say this username. Uh, I pasted the code in here because the original is on Lovers Lab, which is 18 plus only, and I don't know if all my users are 18 plus. So there's the link if you want to get to the original post. Thank you very much to this user. This helped me start digging into uh, UIs for Skyrim and start to understand them a lot better. And by the end of this episode or this series, you will understand all of this code very, very, very well. And the other code is by Ryan McKenzie. This is the SKSC plugin. Um, I love it. Thank you for making this MIT uh, licensed and available for us, Ryan. Uh, we're going to look at this for sure. I love it. Uh, and it's, it's relatively recent-ish too. I love it. Super love it. So we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on the Papyrus and let's actually hop in game. So let's boot up Skyrim. For right now, I don't have any uh, mods or extensions installed. Let's go over to our favorite place, Riverwood, because it's nice and quiet. And so here is the approach that is hacky, but simple and works, but hacky but worth doing, you'll see. Um, one of the things that you can do with your scripts is register when certain menus open. Uh, register when the uh, when an inventory uh, container menu is open. Right now I'm not using Sky UI, it's just the default. Uh, register when like a magic menu is open, I believe, whenever, whenever you're bartering. And you can also register for when the console opens. So you can say, please give me an event and trigger it whenever the console opens. So one of the easiest things that you could do that's kind of hacky is whenever the console opens, you could just register a keyboard shortcut so that whenever the enter key gets pressed or the return, uh, if you've got a, a numpad on hand, whenever that gets pressed, thank you car honking, it's not like I'm recording, um, we could do something. And then there's a problem. If we type some command that it doesn't know, like meow, um, it's going to say the script command meow was not found. 
However, one of the things that we can do with our scripts is we can actually edit what shows up in this box. So what we can do is whenever you press enter, we'll wait for that script command row not found to get added to the console and we can just remove it. Um, and we can handle that command however we want. Um, you could say meow per one, two, three, and we could parse this into three multiple arguments and deal with it however we want to with our script. So in this episode, let's get that up and running. Uh, and then in the next episode, I want to drill down more into how it works or, or maybe, maybe the opposite. I don't know. Uh, Let's do both. Let's make it, and as we go along, we'll figure out how we would figure out how to make it in the first place. So, if any of that makes sense to you. Um, let's make a mod. Uh, I haven't made this yet, so we will call it uh, Custom Console Command or Custom Console Commands or something different, CCC. Custom Console Commands. Easy to search for. Don't use profile specific game INI files. Here we've got the profile selected. Uh, let's create an empty mod and we'll call it um, custom console commands. Cool, and we'll turn it on and we'll tell creation kit because we're going to make it right now. Um, and uh, I don't know whether we even need an ESP with Creation Kit because we're just going to use some scripts, but for now, as we go along, uh, let's make it in Creation Kit as an Elder Scrolls plugin. And if at the end it turns out that we just need scripts and not a plugin, then we'll get rid of the plugin. Um, yeah, let's do that. And let's tell Creation Kit to save all of its files in custom console commands. Uh, now, let me gitify this real quick because I am. Um, I have that repository. Let me pin to taskbar. Uh, let me clone file clone my custom console commands to whatever folder. I don't care where it puts it because I'm going to move it. Uh, show in Explorer. Here's where it puts it. I'm going to go to my mods. And for this series, I'm going to quick access post. Uh, pin my custom console commands so that we can always get there super easily. I'm going to put all this stuff in here. Change where uh, GitHub finds the thingy. And uh, this is just a uh, mod organizer to meta file. Cool. Push. Now let's create the ESP. So that we can play around. We, we could have two plugins, one where we um, uh, like uh, make custom commands and another mod that like provides the utility for creating custom commands, but let's make one mod and then we can rip it apart if we really want to. So we'll save this, we'll call it custom console commands. And to start with, let's just make a um, I think we need a player uh, reference alias to register the commands, uh, the events for opening up the menu and closing the menu so that we know when the menu is open and closed. So we'll make a quest so that we can make a player alias. Um, but we'll probably end up also making a spell just to trigger some of our custom code. So let's do this real quick. Did we open up Skyrim? Ooh, I can drink my tea while it loads. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm. I use like this spicy honey with peppers in it. Mm. I just got some extra hot. I haven't tried it yet. I will probably have tried it before the end of the episode and we'll see if I'm like burning and on fire. So what did I say? We want a quest. Character quest new thingy. Let's do custom console command underscore. We'll use that for our thingy. Um, quest. Close. Open. If there's other stuff that is CCC, aha, good. Then um, 
I'd pick a different prefix, but there's nothing else in the game that starts with CCC, so that's good. At least not the Skyrim base game. Uh, let's make a quest alias reference alias called player rep. Player rep. I always type red. Fill type, specific reference, select forced reference, sell any, and it will auto populate the player rep. And we want a script. Uh, we'll call it CCC uh, player script and we'll extend a reference alias. Um, okay, we got that. Uh, I want to give them a spell when they start um, the game. A spell that we can just attach arbitrary code to to test things out, like arbitrary code that will maybe make the console open up or close or I don't know, whatever. So let's make a spell. If we want to make a spell, we need an effect, so we'll make the effect. If you accidentally make a spell without an effect, it'll CTD the game, as we learned at some point during my 12 episode intro series, which is actually uploading right now to YouTube. Sure, magic effect. Um, I'm just gonna call it effect for right now. Um, we can rename this stuff, uh, CCC effect. It's going to be a fire and forget, so we can just do it. And uh, once we close it, we can attach a script to it. Kind of like quests. Uh, CCC effect script. Boop. All right, awesome sauce. Now let's attach it to a spell, and then we'll give the spell to the player. We'll make a fire and forget spell because the effect and the spell type need to match up. So casting type fire and forget, CCC spell, CCC spell. Effects, uh, new uh, CCC effect. Good deal. Hit OK, and now let's uh, save and go back to our quest. Play reference and add it to the alias spells. Oops, I didn't click on it properly. Awesome sauce. Um, and while we're in here, we could create a um, a, uh, a script, a, a quest script. CCC quest script. And while we're in here, I could um, um, it's always convenient to give the player script a reference to the quest script and um, and the spell maybe. Um, do we need anything here? Oh, it's the magical effect. When we cast the spell, I want that spell that's cast to have access to the uh, player reference and to the quest itself. Uh, just so that we can share variables and, and stuff like that. So this is the last thing I'll do before we switch over to the code. Um, I'm just going to the effect and uh, I'll edit the script here in CK just to add two properties. Um, one will be called CCC player script property player script auto and the other one will be CCC quest script property quest script auto. Sorry that's small, but we'll see that once we open it up in VS Code. Um, Control Shift S. Now we can go to the properties, autofill all. They don't autofill, which is fine because the names of them, whatever. Pick quest, CCC, player ref, and then for this one, CCC quest. Awesome sauce, save, bail. Uh, let's turn our little mod that we made, this little goy. Boop. Let's turn this into a papyrus project. So for that, we go to VS Code. We go to the papyrus extension, little guy right here, little guy or gal, and then we click on the triple dots. We generate the project files and we go to 
the mod folder. Once we're there, we can use our Workspace Explorer to just go right there and open up the workspace. Sure, don't save whatever the heck that was. And here we are, we've got our scripts and we could do whatever. Uh, we could do a hello world just to make sure that our scripts are loading if you, if you want to. Control shift B to build. Go to model organizer, select the ESP. Um, we will be using SKSE, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on. Um, and I'll run with it just because we'll be using its menus really soon. It's, its functions, rather. I want you to give it a little pop up. Cool, it loaded. Great. So, what do we want to do now? Um, we want to detect when this menu opens and when it closes. Um, let's just log and we'll say like a, um, we'll log when it's open and when it's closed or something. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll log on that event. How about that? Um, we could just use reload script. So, um, Let's do this. Oh, there is one problem, so I am going to quit out of here. It's one thing that if you have been with me through my other screencast series that I tend to forget when I do CK. Whenever I make a spell that I want the player to be able to cast to like arbitrarily um, run some code, the effect needs to be associated with what Dungeons and Dragons would call a school of magic alteration, conjuration, restoration, destruction. Uh, so we need to go to our CCC um, underscore um, effect and choose magic skill alteration or whatever skill, doesn't matter what. Well, now we'll be able to cast the spell um, and with the player script, what we can do is we can, uh, when the player script gets initialized, which will, which will be fine for now, this is only going to run once when the uh, mod gets installed for the first time, which uh, isn't super ideal. But what we can do is we can register for menu, except we don't have access to that um, because I think that is a SKSE function, if I'm not mistaken. Creationkit.com, I think it's called register for menu. It's on form. And it's an SKSE function. So let's import SKSE into our project. So, um, if you've been with us before, you know that the project file just has a uh, commented out thing for uh, SKSE, but I usually just, uh, for simplicity with screencasting, I just go and find where SKSE is in mods. I go to its source directory with all the PSE source code files, and that's what the compiler needs. And uh, I just paste it in there, I save, and if you know me, I close and I reopen code because then it will instantly load the imports. And we can go to our player script. We can type register for menu. Is it menu or menu event? Register is for on menu open and on menu close events for the given menu. So the menu name that we care about is called console. Uh, this page, I believe, will show you The full list of all available menus. Here we go. These are all the valid menus. We can register an event for when the barter menu opens, um, for when the inventory or the journal menu opens. So we can register events for that, and then once it's open, we can like poke at it for information and stuff like that. We can even run 
scripts uh, on it, scripts that are defined in Flash Action Script, uh, in Action Script and Flash files. So, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? We want to register an event for menu name. And so it says that now we will get on menu open and on menu close events. So let's do on menu open. And I think it said string uh, menu name. I just happen to know that. Let's do on menu open. It gets the menu name. And let's just start with, uh, let's just do debug message boxes because they, they're annoying, they get in the way, but they, they do their job. Um, um, although, um, we're gonna have to, I don't think reloading this is gonna work because on in it won't fire, but I'll, I'll go out and I'll come back in and, and we'll fix that. Um, as you, if you know me, I like to get things set up so I can use a reload script and we don't have to exit Skyrim. Go in Skyrim, exit Skyrim, go into Skyrim. Uh, you opened menu and menu name. You closed menu and menu name. This probably would be a bummer if we um, registered for the uh, message box menu. That would probably not be awesome if we opened up message boxes and registered for the message box to open. And when it opens, we open up a message box, which we register. Let's not do that, although it would be kind of fun. Um, let's just save and build, and we will uh, boot into Skyrim. And we'll, we'll get our reload script environment set up after. Let's head right on in. And so let's see if our events work. So loaded, we can get rid of that stupid thing. That's our quest script. So we can get rid of that. See what happens if we open up the console. Oh, sad face. Super duper duper sad face. Um, Is this the code that I've used? I have a shortcut to see the code that I've used. I've used this, this, this. It is what I've used before on a reference alias. And it has worked for me. Um, let's do debug.messagebox. Um, registered to listen for console open build and annoyingly we'll, we'll bail and we'll go back in thankfully it skips all that music and nonsense so it goes right here cool it's registered Trace on menu open menu name. I, I'm I'm just wondering if the message boxes if you if you can't open up menus when menus are open. I'm not sure. I don't think that's the case. But I don't want to restart this episode, so I, I want to try this real quick, like. So I'll trace, um, this does say on menu open, on menu close events, and we have on menu open and on menu close events, and we have SKSC running, build this again, piece out of here. Uh, I'm going to open up, uh, enable the Papyrus debug extension so that we can see the traces.
Did you see it? Did you see what was wrong? We weren't running with SKSC. It'll work fine. But now we won't see the debug message boxes because I got rid of them. Ah. Let's just uh, look at the log here though. We'll look at the logs that get running out. On menu open, on menu close. On menu open, on menu close. On menu open, on menu close. Now we can just be kind of cheeky and um, we will. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that I'm pretty sure the registrations don't work. I don't think this works if we edit the code. Okay, let me uh, change, 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 save, compile. Let's go back to the debug console. Go back to the game. Reload script CCC player script. Open, close. Open, close. When you run reload script, you lose your gosh darned handlers. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say when you cast our spell. So event on effect added, actor target, actor caster. This is the event signature for when you cast a spell. And we can uh, close this. Um, when we cast a spell, we will tell our player script to start listening for the console. And so hopefully, hopefully we'll find out we can reload script and after reloading script we can cast our spell and uh, our listeners will boot up again let's find out so instead of using on in it uh, we will do start listening to console although what i will do is events on in it start listening to console except we will make that a function. And uh, in case it's already listening, we will unregister from menu. So we don't have multiple registers in case that is how it works. Um, 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 um. So start listening to console. When we cast our spell, let's say player script dot start listening to console. Save. Right, done with that. Hopefully that'll let us uh, use reload script and have this work. Uh, let's find out. Let's just say on menu open, on menu close. It's got a little cute O. It's got a, it's got a mini O, so it did change. Save, build, run. Cool, we're not quite at 30 minutes. And we've almost got our custom command, I promise. Um, this is a bunch of setup to get ourselves in a good place where we can start really working on this uh, app and to show you cool stuff. I want to pause and get tea in a minute, though. It's getting late. Um, OK, cool. So here's what I'm going to do. Is this keyboard shortcut? Control Shift Y. I have to start using that. Get to the debug menu. Open console, closed. Open, closed. Apparently we didn't compile after it changed uh, or the compilation failed. Compilation failed. I didn't look closely enough. Uh, I did a uh, function and then end event and function save build um, there's a chance that none of our stuff worked let's let's find out let's go back to the debug console run the game console open console close 
reload script and in a minute we'll uh, show you how to get the commands that are run and then we can do our own stuff with them um, ccc player script so now open close does nothing let's cast our spell Let me head right back into it because I'm worried that our compilation completely failed that last time. I, I think it would have failed because you couldn't have called the function because the function wasn't compiled. If that made any sense to you. The spell couldn't have called the function because the function broke. Reconnect the debugger. Cool. Now let's see if we can change it, because that's what we want to be able to do during this. Save, build. Okay, it builds okay. Let's go back to the uh, debug console. If we open and close, it's still using the old, the old compiled packs. Let's reload script ccc um, layer script. It does the whole like a. Uh, whatever thingy. Open close isn't detected. Let's go to our spell and see if we can make it detect again. Uh, our spell... Call start listening to console. Player script. Spellcast isn't isn't doing anything. Um, it's not triggering our on event started. On event on effect added. On effect start. My goofball. I'm a super goofball. Now let's watch the debug console. I think there's some deal with SKSE uh, events where uh, when you reload the script, the events basically stop working. So let me close out of here. I'm going to have some tea. And uh, we're going to spend the rest of this time writing our code by closing Skyrim and reopening it. That's fine. In the next five minutes, I'll have you up and running with custom console commands. We'll type something in. And it will say, pop up like, hey, you typed it in. Okay? All right, let me pause and have some tea. Y'all, two things. One, the tea is really spicy. Like, they really put some hot peppers in here. Called, like, something, something extra hot honey. It's dope. Uh, the other thing is, uh, check this out. What do you want me to put in here? I'll say, what do you want me to put in here for when the menu opens and for when the menu closes? Save, compile. Go back to our debug console. Go back to game. Open and close the menu and it says, hello, hello, foo. Um, let's uh, reload the script, the player script. Now if we open and close the console, nothing happens. The uh, uh, hooks, the event hooks go away. Now we're going to cast our spell. Now we're going to 
Open the console. Close the console. Open the console. Close the console. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save. Um, I'm going to save our code. Uh, got reload script working via spell to reinitialize menu handlers. Now what I ended up doing, let me push this up. Um, I don't know if this is it, but I used unregister for all menus and then I added two instances of register for menu. Uh, let's get rid of one of them and see if it still works. Um, let's super test by going out of game. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna just, uh, we we'll use unregister for all menus, but we'll only register for menu once. Save, build. And then, um, run. I don't know if the dog needs to go outside or if she's just hanging out. She's just hanging out. It's really hot where we live. Um, CSV Riverwood. She's very fuzzy. If you've, you've probably seen her on some episodes. Okay, connect. I promise you that in the next five minutes we would have um, the console thing working, but this is, in my opinion, more exciting. <laughs> because um, we're going to do this for the next couple of episodes and uh, having it up and running and working really well now is sick. It's awesome. My voice is kind of horsey from uh, um, so much uh, um, screencasting today. Save build. I can get rid of that deep look message box. Cool, it's already working. Cool. All right, let's uh, let's get when you hit enter. Let's get that command. So all we're going to do is we're going to basically use the type of uh, what we've been doing so far. Let's get rid of you. I saved in GitHub, so I don't need to comment stuff out. And I don't need to do start listening. Uh, whenever the menu opens, let's start listening for keystrokes. And we'll listen for these keystrokes. Let's go to get the DX key codes from uh, Creation Kit. Here's a reference to the DX scan code. Uh, let's get Enter, which is 28. And then there's one for Return, I think, the numpad, Enter. So we'll say Enter. Uh, enter key code equals 28. Int return key code equals, I think it's like 156 or something. Num enter. Cool. And then let's just listen for those. So as soon as the menu opens, We'll keep some trace statements around. Uh, we will register for key, enter key code, and we will register for key, return key code. When the menu closes, we'll unregister those keys. So register for key, if we hover over that, it registers the on key down and count on key up events for given key code. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, event on key down int key code. Uh, now normally you check the key code. We know we're only going to get one of those two. Um, that's how it works, but whatever. We'll say um, if uh, key code. not equal to enter 
key code and the key code not equal to a uh, return key code. We'll just return. Um, and we won't we won't do anything. Um, that's just safety. We don't we don't really need that. Um, on key down, we need to get the message that was put into the console. So to do that, we use UI, and we can do get things like we can get integers and strings and stuff from the UI. But we have to know this like fancy. Uh, we need to know the menu name and the target. So we need to get a string from the console. But the target is this weird long name. And if we start poking around the UI script and stuff like that, uh, we can see a couple things. One, if we look for get string and stuff like that, it says menu name and target. We know from looking at the valid menu names that console is one of the valid menu names. So that's what this will be. Um, I want to use invoke super duper soon. We'll use this super soon. You can invoke action script with it. Um, but if we get a string, like what in the bejesus, what is the target? What is that? What is that? And so it will be global dot and then like menu name. And then we have to look in the console swift. So let's go here and we'll say, uh, global, because that's what it says to do, console, and then we don't know what else. So I know what else, and uh, thankfully another modder found out for us and posted it in uh, that script on Lever's Lab, but I'm going to show you how we could find out ourselves. Shoe game. Shoe game, shoe. Um, let's go to our data folder. There we go. Data folder. Um, so our data folder has an interface BSA. I'm now going to delete everything I have in my downloads because we're going to fill it up with stuff. Bye-bye. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to extract this interface directory, which has a bunch of Swifts which are flash files, into our downloads folder just to take a closer look. So we'll just extract this whole thing to downloads. And it's pretty quick. Now we have interface. Now here are a number of the menus. Now if we go to UI and we look at this, Barta menu, book menu, console, container menu. Barta menu, book menu, console, container menu. Okay, there's Swifts for each one of these. Um, so we're going to open up the console one and we're doing it with this JPEX. Um, I happen to have downloaded this file. I don't think it matters, but I downloaded it from Sky UI. Uh, so I happen to have downloaded the, uh, if you search the interwebs for gfxfontlive.swift, you'll find it in um, Sky UI. Now it opens up this. Uh, you will just see this like empty and you'll start poking around and you can see stuff like this this is the console opening up and uh, that's the animation for it but you always for all these things want to go to scripts and under scripts you always want to go to packages and then you can ignore the shared and the gfx uh, what you always want to look at is whatever is here um, so for console it's that if we go to the barter menu and i've never opened this up before It opens up on another screen, which is super annoying. We go to scripts, packages, barter menu. Now here are all of the action script functions for it, and here are the properties. So let's go to that for the console menu. So I don't think I can make this bigger. But what we can see is that um, the console this instance in here. Um, there's a thing called console instance. 
and it sets it equal to this. So I don't know if we need console instance. Let's find out. Uh, the modder who posted the code used console instance. And it has stuff like command history and uh, current selection. So let's start to look at some of these things. We also just call one of these uh, functions, which we'll do in a second. Let's try and use the ui.getString and the ui.getInt to call entities. So let's start by doing command history and getting the length of it, because that's what we're going to need to get the most recent. We could also get current selection, um, but th that probably won't be present when we hit enter. So let's go to the history, and I might refer to the code um, here, because uh, this shows us an example of exactly what we want. Oh, I didn't see commands. Where's commands? Commands equals new array. Can you search this thing? Here there's an example of them using console.console instance.commands.length. So that's going to be an integer. And we can get that from underscore global dot this. Let's see if we can copy this. And we got that underscore global from this telling us to do it. So I know it's wicked. I never would have thought of this. Um, I never would have thought of this. So global dot this paste. Um, this is a uh, int. So we'll say int command length equals and all we'll do right now is we'll debug trace total command length is like total command total number of commands run and we'll add command length and we'll see if this works we can use this to get the most recently run command, which is what we want. We want the text. And the way that you get that is weird syntax that I would not have thought of. Over in game, let's reload our script. Uh, let's move this because that's kind of where I am on the screen. Boop. Kill. Um, cast our spell this a little bit further up so that we can see our logs open up our logs enter total number of commands run five enter total number of commands run six Enter, total number of commands run seven. So how do we get the most recent one? How do I get foo? We can get that as a string. And the way that you do that is wicked weird. Um, oh wait, it's not that weird. You say commands and instead of using bracket indexing, you say dot and then the number. So let's do this. So that's how many commands there have been so far. Uh, so let's um, say that the most most recent command equals ui dot get string, and we're going to use the same array because it's a commands array. You saw that in the flash, and apparently you use dot for indexing, so we'll say dot, and then, uh, I don't know if it's going to be command length or command length minus one. Let's try minus one first. Let's 
save build. Head into game. Enter. Bar. Enter. Oh, we're not tracing out. I'm a goofball. Build. Game. Reboot. Cast your spell. Or debug trace. Foo. Hello world, this is me. <laughs> um, and now we should be able to do goofy things like uh, when we run foo. Uh, we should be able to actually go in and uh, delete this code that says command script foo not found. Uh, I'm going to reference the this person's code, uh, this person, thank you for it, to see what object they go into. So we've been looking at commands. Uh, command history uh, has a text property. I think it probably just is text. Uh, let's print it out whenever you say enter. So let's uh, string full command history equals UI get, get string. Let's look at this in the flash real quick. There should be a command history that we can get the text of. Here's command history. Let's look for other instances of it. Cool, there's command history dot text. Here at some point they do uh, command history dot underscore y. That's interesting. Uh, let's do the next search. Could they look at the command history dot text dot length? So it has some text and I think it's just a big old chunk of text. And there's a function called add history. We can actually try and call that function to just add to the history. And I think there's one that just clears the entire history, which could be useful. Uh, which just sets the command history text equal to zero, equal to an empty string. Let's try that, because that's kind of lazy. Um, so commands history dot text debug or let's just trace it debug dot trace full history and full command history and then let's try ui dot set string and let's set it equal to nothing. <laughs> cool, awesome sauce. Okay, let's switch back to our um, debug console. Cool, there you actually saw a bunch there. Uh, if I type foo, it does two things. One, it says, the full history is foo script command foo not found. But then it gets cleared. It gets cleared by us setting the text. Uh, but let's do something even more fun. Let's not clear it anymore. Uh, let's let it just, just go like it should. Um, and we'll say foo. So the full history is foo not found. Uh, we could player dot add am f one hundred, um, and we can see that player dot add item f one hundred was there. Um, so we can do whatever, and we can see it. It's getting added to the 
example history um, I want to try and call an action script function so there is actually a function called clear history and it is on console so it should be console dot clear history so we'll go to UI and see how to do that it says invoke probably doesn't return anything let's see if it returns anything it doesn't return anything so let's just try invoke let's try UI dot and then we'll try something else invoke menu name and then it should be console dot uh, on the console instance yeah let's go to the console instance and let's just try console.clear history I don't know if we need parentheses no idea if this will work but we'll try a couple things we'll try doc we'll get rid of that dot console we'll, we'll try a couple of different combinations Did our papyrus log say anything interesting? No. Clear history is on console. Console.clear history. Try that. I think it worked. When we type something, we're going to call clear history. <laughs> um, instead of clear history, let's do previous command that will just select the previous command and put it in the console. Uh, it's right here. Um, uh, there's hide complete. We could hide it. Um, we could show it. You get the previous or the next command. Uh, we can set the text size. Let's make the text size bigger. I don't know if an, a point size is an integer, but let's try it. Um, set text size. We need to pass an int. Let's invoke int. I hope you're finding this fun. We're calling ac action script functions in Swift. And so far in the console, we've been able to gather what folks have typed. And if you haven't gathered from the fact that we can gather what folks have typed, we can do whatever we want. Uh, we get a string, which is whatever the person types. Like, my cool command is awesome. And then we can do whatever we want with that. Uh, we can invoke our own code. And what I'm going to do, I'll kick it off in the next episode, is uh, create a mod event that your mod can subscribe to so register for mod event called like uh, I don't know console command event um, and you can register you can you can send us give us hooks and say like uh, anytime that someone says the has the prefix gold in their command uh, call my function we'll do that it'll be dope I just want to try this. Let's invoke int and let's do global.console. Um, what was it? Set point size, set whatever. Set text size. Set text size. Oh, and this is on the menu name. And we'll say, I don't know, 30. Save build. And it'll happen right away because we run reload script and uh, something about where it, something about how it runs it. Um, this on key down gets invoked after the reload. It's really interesting. So when we run reload script here, I think it's going to change the text size. <laughs> Mm 
traps. Is that as, as big as it gets? Make it 10. Okay, so that's smaller now. Uh, I can't tell if it's working because we're not looking at our debug console. Okay, these are still working. When you open, I don't think we're doing close anymore. Oh, there it is. We just needed to type something. Oh, it's so little. Oh, it's so little. Cool. Um, all right, we did some stuff. Um, I want to save this just because it's interesting. Uh, interesting uh, commands invoking uh, action script functions from console.swift. Cool. Just over an hour, not bad. Uh, how do you want to end this? Um, what do you want to do? Let's make this do something practical. Um, let's say, I don't know, if you type a command that, um, let's see, we can always just clear the history. Um, We'll just cheat and do that for now. We'll say get most recent command. And we'll say, um, um, uh, let's, let's have some, some commands. Um, let's just say like, uh, function gimme gold. string command and function if the most recent command starts with so we'll use a uh, string till from uh, um, from skse come on dot uh, find in the string most recent command if looking for a gold if that equals zero so if the command starts with gold um, maybe if it starts with gold space whatever something like that um, and if if it does, then what we'll do is we'll invoke gimme gold. And what we can do is we can just pass it the command that is everything after gold. So we can get the substring, string util dot substring. So from the string most recent command, starting at index, we can just cheat. I mean, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, like we could say, um, string the command, command equals gold space. If it starts with command or command prefix. Then we can do the uh, string dot length. I think you can do string util dot length, get length. like arguments if you will whatever got passed to gold is this so we'd say arguments um, we could split it on spaces or something uh, we could say argument text and we could say uh, uh, string array arguments equals string util split argument text on space. I think the delimiter comes second. Yeah. 
and then we can call uh, getting gold arguments. So that could be a kind of API. We could register these. And so what we'll do is we'll we'll just uh, look at the first argument, and we'll say um, um, there's some bugs in here. You might see them, but um, this will work for right now. Um, we'll say. How about uh, in index? We'll loop over these arguments while index is less than the arguments dot length, and while we'll just uh, we'll just assume every argument is a value of gold. I don't know why you would pass multiple, but you can pass one, ten, one hundred, and you'll end up with a hundred and eleven. Um, Form gold equals game get form um, and amount equals arguments index. What's wrong with amount? Oh, it's a string. Uh, string util dot parse. And is there a map dot? Shit, how do you parse? Maybe there isn't something. Maybe you just add int. Let's find out if that work works. Um, we want the player. We are in a player script, um, so whatever. And we can also give the target reference. We we could get like the target reference that the console is pointing out. Cool stuff like that, and give them this amount of gold. You use that little click to select something and give it gold, and we could just check and see if what you clicked is an actor. Um, uh, if this is an int, so if amount, then player dot add item gold comma amount save. Cool game. Console so little now. There it is. Let's reconnect everything. The debug console. Gold one. Oh no! It's stuck in a loop. Oh no! It died. Oh, it's still going. Um, we never incremented index. Oh no! <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> He's just giving us a lot of ones. There's nothing we can do. It's just gonna like overload or something. <laughs> yeah, while loops. Gonna increment that thing. <laughs> uh, oh, and are we clearing it in this case? That um, uh, I wanted to say that if it's a valid command, in other words, if it's gold, uh, clear the console. Save. Build.
Uh, we just did that, so I'll uh, reload script ccc and player script. What I really like doing is assigning a keyboard shortcut to the spell so that we can just go uh, reload blah. I want to make a, uh, a mod that makes this reloading just all like reloading one or many forms and that casting the spell to reconnect everything just like a button. Uh, we'll see. Gold, 14. 14 gold added. Gold, 1, 10, 100. Forty-two. For twenty. <laughs> what are we at? An hour and eleven? Oh, we, we got a uh, hundred and eleven gold at our uh, one hour and eleven minutes into the screencast. I kind of like that. So, sweet. In the next episode, we are going to turn this into a mod where you can, we'll have two mods, uh, where, although we can do it inside one, uh, you can register a command. A little bit nice, what we just did, but a lot nicer, better API. And you can say, hey, here's my command. Whenever the console gets this command, please tell me. Tell me the other mod. Uh, so you can register for it. Um, We'll use register mod events, and uh, I prototyped this last week. I forget what else, but it's gonna look cool. Um, you can give us like your handler. Oh, you can define the name of the event that we will fire. That's what you can do, and we will give you the arguments. Um, in uh, we can pass you a string, and we can pass you a float via the mod event, and. Uh, if, if your mod supports Papyrus Util, if it's included, then maybe we'll also give you uh, a pre-parsed uh, array of uh, arguments. Now we'll just give you the string. You can do with it what you will. Then we'll make it better and better and better. C++ would be really good for this because we could do a lot more parsing, I feel like. Um, but I think we're going to have fun. So. That is, uh, that's me, y'all. Let me, uh, let me commit what, uh, we have. Here's the last stuff that we did. Um, uh, added gold command. Commit, and then let me make this public. Um, that's not the right one. This is the right one. We don't need that anymore. We've learned way more than that just gave us. Um, cool. All right, cool. Custom console commands. We'll turn it into something cool. Um, but right now, it's just what we've been adding so far. Um, we have a gold command that we added. And you can, you can see what we did. It's pretty cool. Right? Right? I think it's cool. Alright, this is episode one. Episode two, let's turn this into a mod, a utility mod. And then in episode three, we're going to start making a user mod so that users can use a UI using UI extensions and MCM menus to build their own commands. Sweet? Right? Okay, peace. And as always, my friends, happy modding. Bye-bye.